So anyway, here's the script, here's the scene, and um, let's just start. And I'm not kidding. Just you. like that. Oh yeah, just like that. I had no idea what this was about. And so, but because of my training at Juilliard, I've learned to grab the line off the, the page, and, and, and as you grab the line off the page and you're getting that emotion of that line, it, it, it informs you as to where it's going. It, of course it does, and it, and, and it informs you emotionally where it's going, and if you just completely open yourself up to that experience, right. then you're able to get on that train, as I said, and ride it. So I did it. And I did a pretty good job. And she got on. She said, "I'm, I'm calling George right now. I'm on the phone to him. I'm gonna. I, that actress that I sent out. I don't like her. I, I want you to have this part." And oh, so wow. she, 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 but they had already offered the part to the other actress. She did call George while I was there, um, um, and um, <laughs> well, I, I perhaps should not say the, the other actress's name, um, but uh, anyway, as I said. Kate ended up not doing the movie at all. Right. And I left that day mm -hmm. and just jazzed out of my brain that I had just met Katherine Hepburn. Right. You didn't sleep that night, did you? Oh, my God. I didn't sleep for many nights. Right. And then um, years later, after I'd gotten out of Juilliard, Kate was doing the Broadway show A Matter of Gravity, and the casting director would not bring me in. Why? Because she's, well, I don't want to offend anybody. No, we don't want just talking. In those days, they used the term mulatto, which I don't think, I don't understand why, I don't think that that's offensive. Yeah, it shouldn't be. But the character was um, of black and white. Mix. Like mix, mix, right, right, okay. And she felt that even with makeup and wig and all that, I couldn't play that. Right. But what I did was I said, uh-uh. So I sat down, and I still had Kate's address, and I wrote her a letter. Mm. and told her and said, P please, could I please come in and audition? So she called my agent and, and they brought me in, but again, they had already cast the part. Right. So I auditioned and Kate, Kate, Kate was so complimentary and Robert Whitehead, the, the producer, what a, what a class act. And they gave me, they offered me the understudy. And of course I took it because I wanted to work with Kate and it meant six to eight months listening to her and being with her and you know watching her and all that. I can I'm listening. I'm yeah. sorry that I took but um, yeah. And Christopher Reeve was in it. And Christopher yeah, Reeve. Yeah, my my Jill friend from Button Juilliard. Juilliard. Yeah. Yes, yes. So he was he was on stage, but so I listened. I I was off stage for the entire run. <laughs> and it was a, a wonderful experience. It was. Unforgettable. Yes, it was. It was. Wh it was. What kind of specific things you learned about Hepburn? What was the, something that it, it made her so great? And everybody knows who she is, and she's a legend, she's a myth. She was ahead of her time, but what makes her so remarkable? I think it's that what I learned from Kate is the importance of believing in yourself. Now, Kate had her, had her vulnerabilities that, that I um, saw every now and then. Yeah. Um, and that was a good thing. But she, she, she also, my experience of her was that she was a woman who, who really believed in herself. And, and she wasn't afraid to let you know that, that, right. that she believed in herself. And uh, she wouldn't take crap from anybody. <laughs> right, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. She was a very strong, mm -hmm. wonderful woman. She also, though, was a very generous woman. Right. Uh, she would throw parties at her townhouse, and everybody was invited, everybody. It didn't matter, the cast, the crew, every single person. And, and I remember one night, uh, I might have even been opening night, I'm not sure, an, an ex-boyfriend of mine uh -huh. was waiting for me uh, outside on the street. We, we did this at the Broadhurst Theater, and I didn't know he was going to be there. And we all were coming out of the theater and after the show, and we all were getting into cabs to go over to Kate's house for a party. And um, he was standing there, and I went, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Christian, hmm. you're here. <laughs> and Kate, Kate was very protective, too. Right. And so she kind of gave me a look, and Ooh. then she went and got into a cab a along with our, our fabulous stage manager. Um, why, oh God, well, why is his names. name? I hate this. It's going to come to you. I, it will when it we will finish come. the show. When we finish it. And, but um, it will come. And I remember <laughs> that she had the cab pull up next to me, and she was going, get in. 
get in the cab. Get in the cab. And I was going, no, 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 no. I have to talk to Christian. Get in the cab. No, 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 I'm going to take it. Because, see, we both were you strong You see, you were, thought, of course. She wanted a younger her. Right. And she got a younger her. But <laughs> she also wanted to be able to tell me what to do. And at times, I didn't follow her dictum. And right. she didn't like that. So right. later, I took another cab, like maybe 20 minutes later. And I got to her house. And um, I was in the kitchen. And she comes up to me and she leans over and whispers in my ear, he's very conceited. Out of I, said, the, out of I said, what? Out of the book. That young man is very conceited. Don't forget that. And then she walked away. <laughs> it was like, hmm, wait a minute. She's right. <laughs> powerful. She's <laughs> powerful. She was powerful. Oh, yeah. And just the fact, you see, this is the beauty of life and that's the beauty of doing this show that this show is allowing me the opportunity to meet so many wonderful wonderful people yeah it's, it's a privilege because I'm sitting down here with you we're doing a live show and but I'm sitting and I'm just taking you in very slowly and I'm just saying to myself I'm hearing this remarkable talent because you are remarkable thank you Talking about Catherine Herburn, it's pretty amazing. She was wonderful. I was really blessed. I was very lucky. Pretty very, amazing. very lucky. Yeah. Powerful, powerful mm -hmm. stories. How was the mm -hmm. transition once Julia was over? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are you were saying to yourself? Okay, I'm going to get out there, see the world, get into acting, because this is scary. The world is not a school, mm -hmm. as we know. Mm -hmm. How you made that transition to the outside world? I actually didn't find it that difficult. You didn't? No, I didn't. Um, it was I, intimidating? No? No, because, you see, again, John, John Houseman provided such amazing training. Right. I felt completely confident. equipped. Confident. I did. I felt completely Good. confident. Okay. I, I knew how to walk in and handle an audition. I knew how to handle the script. I just took f from my... From, from the classes with Michael Kahn and Liz Smith and Edith Skinner, um, I, 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 I just was able to translate that and, 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 and apply that immediately to my auditions. The hard thing was getting out there and getting an agent, but then again, it wasn't that hard because I had youth on my side. Right, and youth, I, and I youth. Had, yeah, exactly. Go and ahead. I had, I had the, 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 that, that aura of Juilliard because right. remember, I was in group three, and that was, it was so brand new, and everybody was, I mean, everybody still is excited about Juilliard, as they should be, but everybody I mean, even in the then, entire world. back then, it was, it was like, oh my God, these are the first babies, the first babies of, of the drama department. So right. I was able to get an agent immediately, right. and I was able to uh, start going out on auditions immediately. And the experience was fascinating, you were having it was fun, wonderful. you yes. were enjoying yes. it. It was not yes. traumatic or frustrating. No. Not, not, well, I'm youth. glad to hear that. I had youth. Yes. I had youth and I had training. But you had uh, plenty yes. of talent. Well, thank you. For, uh, youth, yeah, but mm -hmm. you're, you're a very talented woman. Mm -hmm. And he was able to see that talent right from the get-go. Yeah, as, as they were wetting their pants laughing during my Juliet. <laughs> well, I mean, he <laughs> said, what he said was the word that he used, raw. Raw talent. Raw. He said, he, that's what Michael and John both said. They said, you have raw talent. And, and that's what Juilliard is about, is taking that talent and then honing it. Well, I remember we used to have 15-minute meetings um, once or twice a year with John, which was oh, I was always scared. And I walked in. It was the beginning of my second year. Now, I grew up in Wisconsin, which is not pronounced Wisconsin by the people that live there. It's pronounced Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Everything's kind of through your nose, and nobody really opens their mouths, and everybody kind of talks like this. And, you know, I can't do that, and I can't do this. And, you know, I kind of like you, but I'm not sure. And it's right. very hard hours and like this. And so I walk in, and John looks at me. It's the beginning of my second year. When are you going to learn how to speak Hine? Wow. I said, oh, you, you, you mean you want me to speak in that mid-Atlantic in my real life? Yes. Oh, I didn't oh. know. <laughs> I right. thought that was just for the stage. Right. So that's when I really began to apply and to really learn how to take my, my voice out of my nose. Right, get it out. <sighs> the way they speak nowadays is just, mm. Right. 
you know, this kind of like everybody kind of talks like this now through mm. their nose and nobody breathes. Yeah. It's, 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 they all the girls kind of, they think it's really yeah. sexy. Yeah, and it's horrible. <laughs> it's horrible. This it's We're going to keep going. You see, it's 7.56 <laughs> p.m. No way. Yeah, we I haven't told even you. Gotten, we we're going to keep going. We haven't even gotten to 1976. I'm not even, yeah, <laughs> this is funny, right? But this is what great <laughs> stories are all about. 7.56, before we go, I just want to thank our audience and I want to thank everybody who's here on board. Kelly, for coming and help us out with makeup. Yes, Kelly, We love you. you. I love you. And I look Gloria. up to you. Mm -hmm. Gloria Messick and your mama's designs, baby. This, yeah, is, a, this is great stuff because it's not even heavy no. and it looks beautiful. Gorgeous. Right from Colombia. Mm, Gloria beautiful. Messer, Arthur English, Malik Parker, everybody in MNN who's always here. Charles Casano and of course Alex De Romero, my people, my audiences in Costa Rica, in New York. We have people in England, Darren and Maria and wow. everybody who's following us. It's pretty exciting stuff, but we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going. So where were we? Nineteen what? Oh, we're we, going? I think we've kind of gotten to nineteen seventy-six. <laughs> well, let's keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> let's keep going because I'm not stopping anytime soon. Okay, all right. So, okay. yes, Juliet, getting into TV. Let's oh, talk about oh, yeah. that. Oh, that was so much fun. Yes, that was lovely. I closed in a production of A Christmas Carol. I think that's what it was, and I left that night for LA. Okay. And uh, I was really lucky. Um, I, th I met, I met my agent. I can't really remember where I met him, but I think I met him like in a coffee shop. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Anyway, this wonderful agent, John Crosby, um, took me on, and he's the one that changed my name. He was the one. Yeah, he <gasps> was the one. So what uh, did he say? I Tell me what he said. Well, I'd only been in LA for five weeks. Right. And I was. And you liked it back then? When liked, you, when, liked when you went to LA, do you liked it? I oh mean, yeah. You oh yeah. It? Of course yeah. I did. Yeah. It was a whole new thing for me. Right. And I had to learn how to drive, but that's a whole new thing. But anyway, um, so uh, he says to me, "I hate your name, Kathy Heaney." I said, "Well, it doesn't have to be Kathy. I mean, it can be Kathleen." Heaney. No, 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 no. I hate your name. I hate your name. I hate your name. And I said, well, okay, well, um, here's a thought. And I just pulled this out of the air. And I said, well, here's my name written in Gaelic. And it was K Kathleen Nahini, N-I, which means daughter of. And he goes, what is that? And I said, no, no, no that means daughter of. And he goes, no, 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 it has to be Ohini. And I said, well, that's not really correct. I said, right. that means son of. He goes, I don't care. <laughs> you're, uh <-huh. laughs> you're not going to be, you're not going to be Nahini. Right. The Heaney is bad enough. And then if you add the knee to it, no way. So it's going to be, it's going to be Caitlin Ohini. I said, it's not Caitlin, it's Kathleen. He Kathleen. goes, I don't care. It's going to be Caitlin. So anyway, he started sending me out and, and, the f very one of the very first things he sent me on was to meet with uh, Norman Lear. I love you, Norman. Norman and I are still friends, and uh, just the most brilliant, wonderful, talented, sweet, intelligent, genius, comic genius, Norman Lear. Right. And I read for this wonderful TV series called Apple Pie, starring uh -huh. the what fabulous, a beautiful, beautiful oh, title. fabulous Rue McClanahan, and that remains today the highlight of one of the highlights of my career. career and um so i was i was cast as anna marie hollyhock in this wonderful production of apple pie which was about a woman during the depression who believes that a family is a family because they support each other's dreams not because they're blood related and she was actually advertising in the newspaper because it was the depression and she knew that it was a time when there were a lot of homeless people Right. And she, she had already found her daughter, me, and her son, her two sons, and she'd found the grandfather. But she now was looking for the father. And originally, Michael McGuire was cast in the role, and he was so wonderful, but ABC decided they didn't like him, and they cast Dabney Coleman, who also was wonderful in the role. And uh, Michael Binder, who played my little brother, um, ABC for some reason didn't like him, and they brought in Daryl Morey, who also was very good. Right. But um, so we, 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 we shot this, this show. They picked us up for um, um, 13 episodes. We shot seven. They aired three. And then we were canceled. And we were rehearsing in, at MGM Studios right next door to um, Mork and Mindy. And uh. so Robin and I, because we were at Juilliard together. Robin Williams. Robin and I, we would come out in the halls 
I know. Trust me, I know. Mm. Let's not even go there now. Anyway, so Robin and I, we would uh, hang out in the halls, in the hallway between our scenes and stuff, and we'd both be going, oh my God, we each got a TV show. Oh my God, we each got a TV show. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can we, you, you know, the whole thing. So, um, what a wonderful thing. Now we're talking about Robin Williams. I know. I know. I'm sorry for cut you off, but no, it's no, just. No, 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 no. It's heartbreaking. It's hard. But if that's what he needed to do in order to give himself peace, then I applaud his courage yeah. to do it. If that's what he needed to do. And, you know, I just, I just, I just know, you know what it was? Everybody on the other side needed, needed a good laugh, and they needed Robin to make them laugh. So everybody's laughing on the other side right now. And he's with Christopher. Right. You see, he's with Christopher. Right. And, and um, Stanley Wilson, we were all at Juilliard together, and Stanley and I are still friends. And um, it's hard for Stanley, because Stanley and Robin and Christopher were the mm -hmm. three musketeers.